Today we're going to talk about 6.4 polar coordinates. So this is a brand new coordinate system for you guys. So, so far you've just learned the XY Cartesian coordinate. So if you had a X and a Y axis and you have a point here, point P, you would call that X and Y. So this is your normal Cartesian coordinate system. So today we're going to talk about a polar coordinate system. So in a polar coordinate system, we do not have two axes. We only have one axis, actually. We start from the origin, just like we normally do. We have an origin, and we have what's called a polar axis. Okay, so on the polar axis, from there we have an angle and a directed distance. So we have directed angle here, directed angle theta, and a directed distance here. So we would denote this point P as R and theta. So notice that the angle being directed is something you're used to. So we start from here and we just go around, right? Just like we used to. Okay, but now we have a directed distance. In other words, the distance can be actually negative in this coordinate system. So the way to normally work this is you would work the angle first and then work the distance second. So let's go to example number one and see if we can do one of these. Example number one, A, we have 2 and pi over 3. So we have P is equal to 2 and pi over 3. So we would go from, you know, from the origin here. We would go pi over 3, and then we would go a directed distance of 2. So this would be our point P. Okay, pretty simple, right? So that's A. B is a negative 1, 3 pi over 4. So negative 1, 3 pi over 4. So then this point is, is this, we're going to call it Q. So Q is negative 1, 3 pi over 4. So I go from here again, the origin, I'm going to go 3 pi over 4. So I'm going to go 135 degrees, 3 pi over 4, right? 3 pi over 4, but I'm going negative 1. So I go from here, I'm going to go negative 1 in this direction. Okay, so this guy would be Q, negative 1, and 3 pi over 4. Okay, so that's B. C is 3 and negative 45. So we have 3 and negative 45 degrees. So that would be what? We would start from the origin with the polar axis, and we would go negative 45 degrees. So we would go that down this way, and we would go 3. So it would be 3, whoops, 3 and negative 45. As such. Okay? So this is a polar coordinate. This is the poor polar coordinate system. Okay? So example number two says finding all polar coordinates for a point. Oh, so we have to find all the polar coordinates to a point, which means, which kind of infers or kind of suggests that each point can be prescribed or denoted in the polar coordinate system in a couple different ways, okay? So, let's see if we can do that. So, let's find the polar coordinate P is 3 and, so we're going to do example number 2. Example number 2, and we have 3 and pi over 3, so we have 3 and pi over 3, okay? So, we're going to start again from here, from the origin, we have the polar axis here, so we go pi over 3, and then we're going to go 3. So this is the point right here, 3 and pi over 3. Okay? So notice, we can do what? How, how, else can we, how else can we put this? We can actually go from here, and we could go around, instead of pi over 3, we could go all the way around over here, correct? So from here, so I would be adding another pi to the pi over 3. So I'm going to have 4 pi over 3. I'm going to go 4 pi over 3. 
then I go in the negative direction that way. So it's going to be what? Negative 3, 4 pi over 3. Okay? Does that make sense? So if you do that, yeah, yeah negative 3 and 4 pi over 3, okay? Now actually, this is also the same if I went pi over, th instead of pi over 3, if I went 2 pi around and then go pi over 3, it's the same thing, right? So actually in here, you are kind of insinuating this guy here, right? Okay. So notice what happened. We went from pi over 3, then we added a pi, right? So we went from pi over 3, then we added a pi, and then you went negative direction, okay? So if you go to page 488, in the purple box, it gives you that, right? R and theta, or negative R and theta plus pi, right? Okay, so that's that. Okay, so obviously, if this, so this is how you would do it. So you have different ways of, so this, in other words, this guy and negative three, four pi over three are the same point, these two points are the same point, okay? Right. So that's example number two. So the point that we were kind of would be interested in, if you will look at it, would be how does the polar coordinate system and the Cartesian coordinate system work together? In other words, if I had a point in the polar coordinate system that I had represented as R and theta, but I want to represent this in a Cartesian coordinate system that looks like this. How does this make sense? Well, if this is going to be x and y, right? R, which is basically the magnitude here, right? Would be what? R would be equal to r squared. It's going to be equal to x squared plus y squared, right? Because this is x and this is y, right? So you have x, y, and r, right? So you would have this. So it's going to look like this, right? Okay. What is theta? Theta is here. So tangent of theta is going to be equal to what? Y over X, right? So it's going to be equal to Y over X. Okay. And that's how you would, you would do the conversion. And that's on page 488, the blue box in the middle, right there. Okay. So you have that, so I gave you this guy and this guy, and also the straight coordinate system is that x is equal to what? This, this is r, right? This is r, so x is going to be equal to r cosine theta, and y is going to be equal to r sine theta. So this guy and this guy together is going to be your coordinate conversion. So let's go to example number three and see if we can actually use these. So we're going to convert from polar to rectangular. From polar to rectangular is pretty darn simple. It's about as simple as it gets, right? So if I have a polar system that looks like what? So A is 3 and 5 pi over 6. So I have 3 and 5 pi over 6. Okay, nothing more than x is equal to r cosine theta. Right? And y is going to be equal to r sine theta, correct? Right? So this is what? What do we get here? This is going to be 3 times over 2, negative, right? 3 pi over 2. And then cosine this is going to be 1 half, right? So your coordinate system is going to look like this. 1, negative 3 in your Cartesian coordinate. This guy is going to look like that. Okay? So that was A, and let's do B. B is similar. In B, we have 2 and negative 200 negative 200 degrees, so x is going to be equal to r times cosine negative 200 degrees, y is going to be equal to r, oh, this, is, this is 2, right, 2 sine negative 200 degrees.
That's right. You, you just calculate those out and whatever you get, you plug in, right? Okay, so that's easy. So going from polar, from polar to Cartesian is easy. Okay, the flip side, you have to do a little bit of work. Okay, so that's on example number four. So example number four, it's going to give you the Cartesian, and now you have to go from the Cartesian to the polar. So example number four, example number four says, A, P is negative one and one, P is negative one and one, okay? So now I need to go from Cartesian to the coordinate system. So this is my X and Y, right? So we also know that R squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared, Two, right? So r is going to go to root 2. Okay? Tangent of theta is x, uh, y over x, y over x, negative 1. Okay? So if you look at it, it makes sense, right? So I'm in the what, which quadrant am I in right here? I am negative 1 and 1. So I'm in the second quadrant right here, right? Okay? So obviously, my theta here is going to be what? Theta is going to be 3 pi over 4, right? 3 pi over 4, and this magnitude was root 2. So my average to say it's going to be root 2, 3 pi over 4, right? Or I can add a pi to this, I add a pi to this, it'll be 7 pi over 4, and then go in the negative direction. So if you look at that, those are, whoops, you got these, oh, we're good, okay. Yeah, we're good, okay. So in the book, it says, instead of this, it put negative pi over four, which is the same thing, right? So if I'm going from here to here, this is where I'm looking at, right? This would be seven pi over four, which is the same as negative pi over four, right? So that was A, let's go to B, let's go to B. B is 3 and 0, 3 and 0, or is it negative 3 and 0? It's negative 3 and 0, so it's Q is negative 3 and 0. So again, let's go ahead and do this. R squared is equal to X squared plus y squared, so I do the square root, I'm going to get 3, which makes sense, right? Because if you look at the Cartesian coordinates, I'm going to be right here, negative 3, right? So I'm going to start from the polar axis, right? And what is my tangent here? Tangent is y over x, 0, right? So 0, I'm going to go pi, right? I'm going to go pi, and I'm going to go this way, 3, right? So my first, so it's going to be 3, and pi is going to be my first polar, right? And if I add pi to this, I'm going to get 2 pi, which is the same as basically 0, and then I'm going to go negative 3, okay? So this is one of those things where the negative 3 in the Cartesian directly goes to negative 3, 0 in a polar. So this is, these are two different they're the same point, but this is in Cartesian coordinate, and this guy here is in your polar coordinates, okay? Mm, oh yeah, okay, well, that's good, and we'll stop here today.